Welcome to A Ruined Chapel by Moonlight. I'm your host, Bertolt Gambrel. And today I'm reviewing A Ghost in His Gold by Roberta Eaton Cheadle. It's not easy to categorize this book into one genre. It has historical fiction, horror, and psychological thriller elements. The book begins with a couple, Michelle and Tom Cleveland, moving into their new home in South Africa. For a housewarming party, they play with a Ouija board. Soon after, strange things begin to happen to Michelle, and she realizes she and her husband are being haunted by a poltergeist. The vengeful spirit is named Estelle, a young woman who died in the aftermath of the Second Boer War. Along with her, the house is also haunted by the shades of Estelle's father, Peter, a Boer farmer turned soldier, and Robert, a British officer. These two ghosts are not malicious, but all three are intertwined in tragic ways due to the Boer War. And this is where the historical fiction part comes in. Much of the book is told in flashbacks, showing Estelle's, Peter's, and Robert's experiences in life. As someone who has only very slight knowledge of this period, these passages were fascinating to me, bringing a semi-forgotten time vividly to life. And believe you me, the Second Boer War was brutal. Did you know that's when the term concentration camp originated? After pursuing a merciless scorched earth policy, the British sent their captives to camps where disease and starvation were rampant. The book spares no detail in describing the horrors of war and its after effects. Some passages are so poignant and disturbing they are hard to read. It's easy to see how Estelle's spirit came to be so bitter and vengeful. Meanwhile, in the modern day, Michelle works to piece together the story of the three ghosts. She comes to realize that Estelle has her reasons for choosing to haunt her and her husband, as Tom has dark secrets in his own past. I won't spoil how it all ends up. The best way I can say it is to say it's a story full of horror and forgiveness. Forgiveness is a major theme in the story, though, come to think on it, I think there are some things that shouldn't be forgiven. Yes, that's right. I'm very sympathetic to many of Ghost Estelle's arguments, demonic though she may be. I won't say any more, just that I think the reader will have to decide for themselves whether certain characters can be forgiven for their actions. Maybe this is a good time to bring up trigger warnings. I don't always do those, just because it's tough to know what may be upsetting to different people, but in this case it's not hard to guess. Pretty much every disturbing thing you can think of happens here. It's a book about war, and war is a brutal business, and every kind of trauma is referenced here. This is not for the faint of heart by any stretch. If you want to know more, email or DM me. If you're fascinated by history, as I am, then this will be an excellent introduction to the Boer War era. I've been trying to learn more about the period, which is why this is the second Boer War-based novel I've read this year. Curiously, that book was also about forgiveness. It's an unsparing, brutal take on it that depicts the British Empire's attempt to seize the resources of the Transvaal as a bloodthirsty conquest. While some low-ranking British soldiers and officers, such as Robert, are portrayed sympathetically, the overall picture of people like Lord Kitchener and other high-ranking officials is very harsh. The whole thing feels very grim and depressing. Mindless violence and cruelty perpetrated for an empire that no longer exists. Once, while researching the Boer War, I came across a song about it by a singer named John Edmund. The song title and refrain is, What in the Hell Was It For? This echoed in my head repeatedly reading this. It really is that dark, but it's to the author's credit that it feels so real and immediate. As for the supernatural horror element, I liked how it mostly lurks in the background of the story, only to periodically explode in moments of intense terror. It's used sparingly, but packs a punch when it needs to. A few technical notes. First, the book is told in the present tense, which may be off-putting to some readers. It felt odd to me at first, but I got used to it. Second, on the Kindle version there are a few places where the font size changes abruptly, I think this is due to the smaller font for the footnotes spilling over into the main text. 
may also be a function of my using a very old version of the app. There were a handful of typos, but we indie authors are all used to that sort of thing and know how hard they are to get rid of, and this is a long book, which just makes it harder. It didn't bother me over much. The last thing is a stylistic point. The dialogue is not naturalistic. It felt to me more like lines from an opera than dialogue from a novel. Now, there are certainly many different ways of handling dialogue, none of which appeals to everyone. It's just that at times it seemed a little too formal to me, if that makes sense. However, that may not be everyone's impression, so don't let that put you off checking it out. This is a really moving, poignant book, and it's clear the author did a huge amount of research for the Boer War setting, and the supernatural elements linking it with the modern part of the story were ingenious. You have to be in the right frame of mind for it, but if you are, I recommend it.